Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie. If you're new here today, I have for you guys. I am reorganizing and getting all of my homeschool stuff set up and ready. So this is going to be like part of what's going to be like my homeschool curriculum haul. I'm going to tell you guys why I chose to change, but for sure the main part of this video is going to be me getting this room clean. I am currently working on washing the walls. I dusted in here earlier today. That's in my vlog that you'll see where I look like this. But um, yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish cleaning the walls, but I was gonna move a couple of things around, so I was like, well, let me go ahead and turn on the camera. So let's go ahead and get into finishing up this office area. So of course the camera died, but I've gotten so much done. I got the boys' little drawers done. So Ethan, Micah, Bryce, Brian Defoe, Bryce Alexander, King Ronald, and then I'm working on this shelf right here. I also split up their um, helpers, so they're all going to have an even amount of helpers since they will all well since these three will be doing math and then. King just has one set of helpers since he's preschool slash kindergarten. He don't need that many helpers. And right now I'm currently like organizing the rest of this stuff. And then I'm going to get their school supplies out of there and start separating them. So still got a little bit of work to do. Alright you guys, this is how everything is looking so far. So I'm getting rid of all their old curriculum. I asked my older sister because she also, all three, all me and all my two sisters from my mom, we all homeschool. So I asked my older sister like, hey, do I have to keep their old curriculums like 
prove some sort of something and she was like she's like no you really don't have to start keeping track of anything until middle school and high school so I was like all right I'm throwing everything away well um, I kept that because any extra school supplies we get throughout the year I will just stick in there and then this is their little setup for everything so this one these are their first and middle initials I think I already told y'all but this is just how it's set up so let me show you what's in their school boxes so the older three all got um, pencil grips. They all got four of these, or Ethan got, I think they all got four of these, or five. I think Ethan got five. I want to say Ethan got five. I don't know how I split these up. Somebody should have an extra one somewhere. Oh, Ethan has an extra one. Ethan got four. The other two got three. Um, Ethan got nine erasers. Two dry erase markers. They all got eight pencils and then their color pencils. They'll have two erasers each. Ethan, can you go do your work? So Ethan has one of his erasers right now and then a pencil sharpener. I need to buy two two pairs or two pairs of scissors, one for Ethan, one for Brian, and then I need to buy little Brian a pencil sharpener because he doesn't have one yet. And then they all have a set of markers, and I'm going to write their names on these because I need to know who's getting into their markers and who's not if I find things everywhere. Um, Ethan has this little, like, fun, like, math game, so this will help him with, like, multiplica multiplication and division this year. Um, this is some of his curriculum. The rest should be here later. They all got two spirals, one, um, like, handwriting practice book, and then Ethan has these helpers in here, like, vocabulary and then these math sheets that help him. Um, I need to go get a set for little Brian and Bryson. Um, I found these at Mardell's. And then Ethan has two sketchbooks that he's my little artist. Um, and then they will, the older three will all have, or Ethan's gonna have three sets of helpers and a ruler. So this is little Brian's drawer. And then like I said, two erasers, he needs a pencil sharpener, two dry erase markers, eight pencils, eight pencil or eraser caps, three of these little pencil grippy things, um, color pencils, crowns, and then in the back you see his markers. See he has three sets of helpers just like Ethan will and a ruler. And then his curriculum, and then he has two spirals and practice, handwriting practice. Okay, this is Bryson's Okay, so he has three of these, three helpers, like I said. Oh, I hate these yellow ones. These yellow ones come apart easy. Um, same thing in his is pretty much the same setup as Brian, sharpener, but he has scissors. And then, yeah, two erasers, crowns. Um, I'm also going to write their names on these. I just haven't yet. I want to get a label maker. Um, this is to help him start learning how to read. And then, um, again, handwriting practice, two spiral notebooks or composition books, and then he has, he has more of these, but they're in his backpack right now to finish up summer school, but these are little, like, those little things that you can use dry erase markers on, and that's to start helping him practice his math. And then again, like I said, the end of this video will be a more in-depth um, homeschool, like curriculum, haul, and things like that. So this is King's. Um, King has four of these My First Tychochondria pencils. His own, er his own um, he has two erasers, his own pencil sharpener, color pencil, scissors, crowns. And then all of their markers are back here. They have a drawer, their markers are in the back. Um, King also has some of the dry erase little things underneath there. Um, handwriting practice, two spirals. King has another book to practice writing numbers and letters. And then, like I said, those little dry erase board things. And then he also has these. All right, you guys, I thought that I would show you guys exactly what the setup looks like. So we have our little lamp here. I just like the lighting that a simple lamp gives. We have our globe over here sitting on this little thing right here. Um, we have our electric pencil sharpener. 
in here I have the little abstract things. I just need to print out the sheets for them to play with it. And then in this one we have a lot of our Bible time things. So this one is 31 prayers for kids. I have the armor of God. These are actually um, gospel conversation cards. The attributes of God and the word of God. And I also like this one. This was from BSF a couple years, or la couple, not last year, but the year before. So a couple years ago. And this is what it um, just says more things about the Bible. So I held on to that. That glue sticks. Right here we kind of have their... Um, anything that we would consider a helper. So for kindergarten, these like teach you like cub, a cat. Let me see the front of this so you can see. Has some math and things like that in there. Um, for preschool, it's all about like letters and numbers. We have some money activities. I just actually have to buy the fake money. Um, a few extra school supplies, just like notebook paper. This is a uh, a Bible reader. I want to start our day off once we start our new school year. I want to start it off by reading that out loud. I'm just asking them questions about what they learned. And then I was using this box, but then came in here and messed everything up. So I was using this box as my Bible study box, but now it is this one. And then I put the pencils that we are currently using in here. So these are like community pencils, if you will. I don't know how else to call it, but for the most part, everything in this box is mine for Bible study. We have our arts and crafts box down here. So there's paint, there's beads, there's paint brushes, anything you can think of for arts and craft is in there. And then... We will start going through the curriculum, and we will start talking about why I decided to change it. All right, you guys, so I decided when I first started off homeschooling, I was using Easy Peasy. Um, it's also, when you go to the website, it's all in one homeschool. I was using that at first, only I was printing out everything, and that just got really, really expensive, and at the time, we could not afford that, so I decided to go to... So I was having to buy ink like every month and every month it was $40 on ink or more depending on where I could find it. And so I was like, well, maybe we should just switch to something else or buy something that's a one-time deal. So then I started going to Mardell's and I started like handpicking their curriculum. And while that did work, it was really frustrating for me to have different kinds of books and having to teach different kinds of ways. I want short and I want simple. I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle of all the things because we sit, I, I would not definitely say I am, I'm not a classical conversation. I'm not a co-op mom. Like that's just not me. I have a very introverted child. I am very introverted. I have a child that's kind of in between. He likes to be home, but he can also go out. And then my oldest is very extroverted. And that's the reason why we do one day where we were out of the house almost the whole day almost up until nap time so that's why we have our library days and we have our park days i had to schedule a set date in there and that is enough for him and then come um september so come next month when we do start school for real for real we are going to have monday nights at bsf i consider that kind of like a co-op but it's all about bible so each kid will go to their own class, and I, do, I don't have to teach at all. That's one thing that I didn't like about any co-op group is, like, you have to volunteer to teach. I don't know about other people. I love my kids. I love my nieces and nephews, and I'm great with them, but I cannot be great with everybody's kids, and I'm just not a kid's type of person. Like, I can barely hold it together for my own kids that I'm able to discipline, that I'm able to give, like, the mom look to. I can't be handling anybody else's disobedient kids. And so I know that about myself. So I stray away from dealing, having to deal with other people's kids. Not that if they come to my house, I'm just going to be so mean. But like if you, to me, understand my parenting if you're going to leave your kids with me. And everyone about me knows that. They know that your kids are not going to get away with anything. They know that I'm going to talk sternly to your kids. 
if your kids get in trouble, they will be sat down, they will be separated, and they will not be able to have fun. I will have them stuck to my hip like glue. So, and not a lot of people really like that form of discipline. They're more like, let me talk to you. I, I don't have that kind of patience. So that's the reason for me not really wanting to do co-ops at all. So if you're wondering, that's why. So, yeah, and also, I want to teach the things that I want to teach. I want to teach what my kids are interested in, and I don't want them feeling obligated to do anything else. For PE, we do um, workout videos. That's something that they see me do constantly. So they, that's something that they really enjoy doing. They go play in the backyard. My kids are very active. They're very social. We go to we go to the church on Sundays. Like I said, when BSF starts up again, we're going to be going to Bible study on Monday nights. Um, we'll go to the library on Thursdays. And now my sister that lives in town is also, and now that my sister that lives in town is also homeschooling, we bring our kids together. And we um, we are trying to have a day where we either, I go over there to her house or she comes over here and we homeschool at the same time, even though we're not teaching the same thing. Um, or at least do like arts and craft day together. I think that would probably be more feasible since we're doing two completely different curriculums. We teach two completely different ways. I think maybe having like a craft day with her would be pretty awesome. And you know, like there's ways to just get your kids social and things like that. But yeah, so those are just the ways that I like to homeschool. I just wanted to get that out there. So now we can kind of go into the curriculum. So for Ethan, at first I was really concerned about him getting moved up to third grade math. But then I looked at um, Easy Peasy's curriculum. And so a lot of what I'm doing, so Easy Peasy has two different types of curriculum that you can actually purchase. You have the part that you can purchase to use online because online Easy Peasy has it to where, uh, I'll call it EP from here on out. So online EP has it to where Part of, like they're like online kind of teaches them like I will guide them through it this is the kind of school that I needed so like I said I'm not really a classical mom I'm not a traditional mom but I'm also not all the way child-led and I'm also not all the way um, unschooling because I like for there to be some kind of structure but I'm not type A at all if that makes sense <laughs> so I like for them to be for, like for there to be some kind of routine and some kind of structure but if there's a day where I, instead of doing work, I want to take them on a field trip, like, we're going to do that. So that's just the type of homeschooler that I am. And so their curriculum, I, got, I decided to go the route where a lot of their teaching is done through online videos and online teaching. But they also have workbooks that go with online. Now, if you are the more traditional route, you don't want your children to have screen time. EP, like I said, you can print all of this out if you want, but uh, you should have one of those really big printers if you're going to be printing their curriculum out, and you can do it for free. Just pay for the ink and the paper. I do not have one of those printers, so it's getting really, really expensive. And they also have it to where you can buy the curriculum that will teach for you without having to use the computer. So you can see all of my books say to be used with the online course. That's the route that I started to go. And so, like I said, I was really worried about my eight-year-old moving up to third grade work. But then once I looked into the book, I kind of saw that it, start, that it starts off with second grade work and eases him in to, like, the third grade work. So I was like, okay, so I can move him up. And that's a beautiful thing because last year I actually held him back in math for a while. He stayed doing first grade math for a while and then towards the end of the school year and into our summer school, that's when I moved him back up to his second grade school work, math work. So yeah, I'm really excited to get him started on that. And like I said, my children need, are not, do not do well with a lot going on on a page and do not do well with like color everywhere. So that's one thing I really enjoy about EP because it's very simple. So this is like the first, obviously, addition in math, and then you're getting into your triple digits, which is currently where he's at, but I'm glad it's not until lesson 24. So he kind of gets a refresher because right now he's working on triple digits, but I'm glad once we start this next month, he will um, have a little refresher of last year first. And then we're going into telling time. And I'm glad that some of this is down the road because I do need to buy a clock. I do need to buy fake money and things like that. And those are things you have to buy, but the good thing about homeschool is if you take care of your stuff, you will be able to use it with every single kid. So even though it's expensive whenever you first have to buy that stuff, remember you get to use it the entire time, except for obviously like the workbooks and stuff. 
And um, I mean, I could have them do everything in notebooks and things like that, which I might do. I'm, I don't know yet. I won't know until we start. Um, and yeah, so it goes into multiplication and then hundreds chart. And it just, I really liked it. So that's the third grade math. And then you have language arts. Ethan actually is really, really good at language arts. And so, yeah, so it has their vocabulary and things like that, writing sentences correctly, um, teaching them what words mean what, what kind of word is that, and just like that, language arts is pretty basic. But like I said, these books are pretty simple. So where it gets a little confusing is the reader. So you have the EP workbook, but for instance, this doesn't start until lesson 24 so this tells me lessons 1 through 23 are all are going to be all on his um, tablet so he'll be doing that but he will be using his tablet in conjunction with this book because there won't be any worksheets for a while I don't think and so this one actually starts at lesson 1 and it's a lot of reading and going into poetry so in third grade they start a lot of poetry Another thing that I like about Easy Peasy a lot is that all of my big schoolers, so all of my middle, so my third, second, and first grader, whenever little Brian comes to live with us, he'll be doing um, second grade. They all get to do the same science and um, geography. Uh, Texas calls this um, good citizenship, but this would also be called social studies if they were in public school. So. Geography and Cultures, I decided to do this the first year, so they each have their own book, and this is just what it looks like, like I said, it's really good, and there's a lot of this that is done from their, from the computer and them reading and things like that, and then these are like their little projects that go with the online lessons, so it's not all online, but it's also not all just books, but I need that help to help me teach them better. And then this is the science book, which is pretty good. Um, in Texas, you don't actually have to teach science, but that's something that I enjoy doing and that my kids enjoy learning. So yeah, mapping, rocks, and everything like that. So this is going to be a lot of fun. And then like again, their science lessons are mostly gonna be online. So lesson one, they'll do the mapping, but then they don't have another lesson in this book until lesson 32. So that's going to be cool and fun. And then I will not show you guys these books again. Because they, um, all of my upper kids have that, those two books. What person? Yes, And then all of the letters on here actually stand for their first and middle name. That's what these stand for. So now into volumes. Let's take a look at his curriculum. Okay, and then like I said, the things that they all have the same in their boxes are math helpers, rulers, markers, and then like your basic school supplies. And then um, everybody has two spirals one handwriting tablet, and then a folder with notebook paper in there. They all have that in theirs. So this is the same thing. This is their reader notebook. It goes with, along with this book, and you see for second grade reader, his lessons start at lesson 21. So it's kind of the same thing. They all have a reader. This is where they'll do their reading, and then their teaching is online, but then they have workbooks. So this is... Uh, See, um, if each grade level is a little bit different, so this is following directions. Draw a big number eight, give it a silly face. Draw three different shapes, color them all differently. So, see, this is a beautiful thing about homeschool is that it actually teaches them things like this. Okay, practice following directions. Things like this, writing, describe what tongs look like with I think tongs look like, and then he'll finish the sentence. And so that's what their... Um, grammar is and I like this grammar because it can also be uh, like spelling and things like that. 
or not grammar, language arts, sorry. And then this is the second grade math. And so addition squares, which I really like. So 9 plus 6, 9 plus 4, 6 plus 6, 6 plus 4. I think that that's pretty cool. Um, counting, so you got to count by tens to fill out that, which is something that's cool. Um, he's going to cut this out and make a cube. So a lot of geometry. And then hundreds, tens, and ones. So learning how to write in the hundreds place. Also counting money. Ethan has that in his as well. And then obviously you can see it's starting to slowly take him into what he's going to be doing for uh, third grade. So that is what the second grade looks like. And then like I said, they're all doing the same math. And, I mean, not math, um, science and social studies, which I like because I can just sit them down all at one time and I can do their projects with them all at one time. So now we are in my first grader's box. We have this little sight words thing for him. So I really want him to be reading by the end of 2023. That was a goal of mine at the beginning of the year and we're almost there. Again, same basic um, school supplies, uh, and then the same two spirals of um, same science and geography, a handwriting tablet, and a folder with uh, notebook paper in there. So you see the first reader is a little bit smaller than the second and third grade reader, but it's just the same thing. Um, I will be reading this to him once we start. And then he'll just be answering questions for me and going along with the um, going along with the online lessons. This is what his little this, this is what his little book looks like. So again, start putting in the missing letters. So it's still teaching him how to read. So a lot of his um, stuff, like I will be writing for him probably. But well, these lessons, what lessons does his start at? See, so he doesn't start doing like the hard lessons until lesson 108, which means he should already be knowing how to spell and write by the time he gets to this lesson, which is pretty good for me because <laughs> I have all that time to teach him how to read. And then he, um, his language arts is, he has lesson one, so mom will definitely be helping him with this. Um, but he's getting pretty good at learning how to look at letters and copy them down so hopefully by the time we start this we have about a week the rest of this week today's thursday so tomorrow and all of next week to get him better at um writing letters and things like that so we will be going hard on that this week these next couple of weeks and then his math principles Again, um, his lessons don't start until lesson number three. So a lot of his math will be online until lesson number three. And then it just goes into like the simple math and things like that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is move that addition and subtraction chart to his. Because when my second grader was here for the summer, I saw that he was actually really good at math. So I actually don't think he needs the addition chart. I'm going to go ahead and give this to Bryson. And we're just going to stick it inside of his math book. Okay. And with my four-year-old, I went back and forth a lot with, was I going to start him in pre-K or was I going to, I, was I going to keep him in pre-K or was I going to go ahead and move him up to kindergarten because if he was in public school he'd barely be starting pre-k because he is a december baby so in texas you have to have a birthday before september 1st in order to be able to start school that year at four he doesn't turn four until december which means he has to wait until almost a whole year goes by so he'd be like an older pre-k student and after just thinking and things like that um i decided i decided to keep him in pre-k and mostly it's because of his speech he struggles a lot with enunciation and things like that and I figured keeping him in pre-k and learning the letter sounds all the way over again with the set curriculum I think would be really good for his speech so that is why and some of his motor skills 
um, I really just wanted to keep him in pre-K. And that, like I said, I, if he was in public school, that's where he would be anyways. And if I feel like he, at, at all, if I feel like at all throughout the school year, okay, he is way too advanced for pre-K, I can easily move him up to kindergarten. And that's the beautiful thing about homeschool is that I don't have to wait for him to finish the entire school year before I'm like, okay, he needs to get moved up. So we did start him off with preschool. Um, EP, and even if you talk to a lot of homeschoolers, what they will tell you for preschool is that a lot of the learning between the ages of basically toddler ages, because most people think, or I started, I started teaching all of my kids at two. All my kids started learning numbers, colors, shapes, letters, and all of that at the age of two. The only one that's had a really hard time grasping it is Bryson, and that's okay. He's, he's my son, so, um, uh, it took me a while to realize he's like me and he learns better from videos and watching. Uh, so, yeah, but a lot of people will tell you that for preschoolers up until the age of about five, they learn through play and coloring. And so for the preschool curriculum, it is one book. That's why I did took it upon myself to add a few other things in there because some of the stuff King does know. But I know that by the time we get to the back, you know, he's going to be good at reading and recognizing words and things like that for kindergarten. So, like I said, it's just a lot of fun stuff. It's a lot of what you would call art projects. So, for for instance, lesson one, sing the alphabet song. Talk about how the letter's name is A. But when it is alone in a word, it has the short A sound as an app. Look at the letter A. It's the, it, is a, it is a kind of letter called a vowel. Then listen to the story of April the Alligator found on the next page. So yeah, I don't think a lot of Kings is going to be online, but we see he has like little projects to do. And it keeps him on A for a while. I believe for like almost a whole week, he keeps it on A. And then he'll go into B. And it's the same thing for every letter. It's like a week per letter. So who knows, maybe we'd be done with this before the school year's even up and he'll be starting kindergarten anyway. And then like I said, he has the same thing. Handwriting tablet, two spirals, um, two or a folder with notebook paper in it, and then he has this dry erase. I need to go in here and erase stuff off of it, but you know, like it's gonna help him more with the dry erase markers. That's why they have dry erase markers in there, is because they all have short that they can do long, short, so he's going to be learning out of this book too, so a lot of fun stuff for Kingy. And then like I said, I'll be reading to King and also working with King on uh, reading as well. He'll be watching a lot of learning how to read videos because I felt like I really slacked with Bryson. I was really hard on Ethan. I don't want to say hard on him, but I was really dedicated to Ethan, you know, like with your first child. You're kind of like on them, okay, learn this, learn that, learn that. And you have that time when they're the first child and they're the only child. And then like with Bryce and I kind of started slacking. And then when I had King, because they're only, are they 18 months apart? Bryson was eight months when I got pregnant with King. Yeah, they're not that far apart, but when King turns five, Bryson is six, so. But their birthdays are only five months apart. So they're 17 to 18 months apart. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, I just started teaching them together, and I felt like I failed Bryson, so. The thing is, my stepson's mom did, well, his schooling did really good with him because he really started to pick up on a lot more stuff once he actually started school. And so then I have little things like this um, that I, you know, like I find these things at Target. So King can dry erase on this. I can also write letters on this and say, okay, can you tell me what letter sound this makes and things like that. So I plan on doing things like that with King, like instead of flashcards, I'll just write them on here and he can tell me that and I can erase and do it again. So for the older kiddos, we have these dry erase things that go in these big old slots. So these are going to be good for like Brian and Bryson. So you have 10 frames. You have find the rule, find the missing number, and write the rule. So 
you have fractions and graphs, your hundred or oh, counting, so circle the numbers equal to. So I write a number here, and then we'll go through and circle the numbers that equal that. Um, decimals, number line, a subtraction uh, chart, an addition chart. Um, this one I really wanted for Ethan, so multiplication table. Um, draw the shapes. I really like these little triangular things. And then addition equation. And then place value. And then they have these big old things that you can you can set these up on the table. And for instance, let's see. You can set these up on the table. And All right, you guys, I'm not sure what happened to the rest of my footage, but I would believe I was showing you guys these things last. So these are just the little boards and they all have different little sheets. So like I said, they got them this math one and they can stand these up on their table. I'm gonna put King's little shapes one in here. And then they also had this story writing pack, which I really like for Ethan because he likes to draw. He likes to draw and whenever he draws, he will tell me a whole story about what he drew. So I thought maybe this is the year to start teaching him how to write stories. So that way he can actually write underneath what he draws. So draw conclusions and then it just gives him little prompts. What does the author tell me? What I already know, my conclusion. Um, informative writing, so teaches him how to have a topic, a main idea, and then to support his main idea. I think that these are so cute. Big notebook paper, um, a graph. It has a topic triangle, and then cause and effect, so we'll be learning about that. And then it also has a story map, so character setting a plot, and then creating characters. Again, another blank notebook and then it has the opinions so my opinion is and why he thinks what he thinks which is something that we've really been working on like okay then why do you think that what made you think that and so i thought that would be good as well we have the outline uh sequence chain so chain of events um the timeline so starting to be able to tell what comes in the story and when predictions about a story we already work on this whenever he reads a chapter out of his book for me I'll say okay what do you think is going to happen in this chapter oh what's happening in this chapter what do you think is going to happen in the next chapter um and then some more for him to plan his story and then how to teach him you know these are the questions you answer in a story who what when where and why and I just thought that that was really good to have and again it comes in this well, didn't, these did not come together, but you can slide this in here for him to use as a dry erase board. Here's how I look. I was literally editing and relaxing, so I have on my bonnet, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I love you guys, but always remember that Jesus loves you more. Let me know if you want more content like this or if you'd like to see more homeschooling content. Again, I do try to stick more towards lifestyle and cleaning and home things but if you live in parenting but if you'd like to see more homeschool stuff just let me know and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys